This is Oleoducto de Crudos Pesados, OCP, the 500-kilometer-long underground oil pipeline stretching from the east to the west coasts of Ecuador. It starts at the oil fields in the Amazon region, climbs over the Andes Mountains at an altitude of 4,000 meters, and then descends to Port Esmeralda Terminal on the Pacific coast. The pipeline is designed and equipped for continuous, safe and reliable service. No downtime is an absolute requirement. The heart of the pipeline consists of four pump stations with a total of 22 oil pumping units, all engineered, pre-assembled, tested and delivered by Vartila. The engines run on heavy crude oil and have a combined output of 100 megawatts. The peak capacity of the pipeline is 518,000 barrels a day. That's six barrels every second. Our engines can work in almost any condition. Ambient condition, I mean. We can go from hot, dry, we can go to humid conditions, we can go to cold conditions. The four pump stations along the pipeline contain altogether 22 Vatzela engineered pumping units, consisting of a main engine, a speed increasing gearbox and a centrifugal pump. There are also six power generators for electricity. All the engines are fueled by the pipeline's crude oil. There are currently another 20 Vatzela power plants in the oil production areas of Ecuador. These generate the energy needed locally to transport the crude oil from the oil fields to the buffer tanks of Amazonas at the starting end of the pipeline. This is Amazonas, the starting point of the Oleoducto de Crudos Pesados. The oil is gathered here from the oil fields of various producers. And here's where the crude oil starts its 500-kilometer underground journey, pressurized and heated up to almost 80 degrees Celsius to keep it flowing. From here, the oil travels west, up and over the Andes, and down to the marine terminal near Esmeraldas to be loaded on tankers and taken to the refineries of the world. The pump station of Sardinas lies 3,000 meters above sea level. But the high altitude has no effect on the output of the engines. These perform as they were designed to. Mr. Konrad Vodka used to work as OCP's director of operations. He was one of the people responsible for the safe and continuous operation and throughput of the pipeline. He also participated in the pipeline's design and construction, including evaluation of the quality of the engineering and equipment. I expect to have a high reliability, and the reason I say that is, uh, I think one of the things Tashint did in this uh, design is they produced a very good, uh, tight specification for the engines and pumping units, and uh, which actually made it uh, quite easy for us to evaluate and uh, recommend uh, the successful vendor, which was Wartzella in this case. Mr. George McCoy is president of Petropower Limited and McCoy International, two US-based consulting companies specializing in crude oil-fueled pipeline pump packages. Mr. McCoy was assigned as a consultant for TechInt, the Argentinian EPC contractor entrusted to engineer and build the OCP pipeline. Well, the thing that was fun while working for Tequint was that they allowed me to start from a blank piece of paper. And this gave me the opportunity to develop a, a detailed specification. It's, it's what I call a word drawing to protect the OCP partners from safety risks and lost oil revenues that are due to downtime. For example, one day downtime can pay for three or four complete units. And in your assignment, what priorities did Tekin set for the OCP? For me, the first thing is always safety when you write a specification like this. And then the next thing, worrying about the investment of the partners, you have to think about three things. Throughput, throughput, and throughput. The agreements for Oil production are based on calendar time, not volume. So you have, let's say, 15 or 20 years to achieve a good return on investment for the partners and also, in some cases, for the country of operation. Uh, in some places in the world, entire countries depend on these machines performing successfully. So 
they are the heart of the pipeline, and it's a job I take very seriously. Now that the entire pipeline is operational, it's interesting to see how the results measure up to the predictions. I think it's well recognized, certainly by us, that the, the engines are a, a, a very good product, and uh, we were quite happy with the performance test. This is the Paramo pump station, the last one before the top of the Andes, isolated and high up in the mountains. Yet the engines run like clockwork, smoothly and reliably, on the crude oil that runs in the pipeline. A big part of an operating expense will be the logistics, transporting fuel to the pump sites. And in this case, uh, we can take the fuel right out of the pipeline and uh, consume it by the engines. So that reduces the logistics, which is especially important here in the Andes, uh, where road transportation is difficult. All Varzela engines can easily be modified after installation to run on various grades of fuel. This is a real advantage over time, says Ralf Stur, because the quality and grade of the crude oil carried by the pipeline will certainly vary over the years that the oil fields are expected to stay productive. And not only oil or gas, we can also have combinations with oil and gas. These are the GD engines, DF engines that we call them, dual fuel engines. So we can run on any uh, ratio of oil and gas. We have high expectations, you bet. We have high expectations, yeah. The major equipment selections on OCP should fulfill all expectations for the next 40 years.